Hello and welcome to CineTracer version 0.54. We're going to go over the new additions and at the end I'll talk a little bit about the general direction of CineTracer development and anything else that needs to get addressed. Um, we're going to do that right now. So hitting tab, we're going to go to the building menu and you'll see right now that prefabs is slightly different. Prefabs, for those that uh, are still wondering what's happening with maps, these are maps now and hopefully these ones really show you what's going on as far as that direction. Uh, you'll see that by default I have these two here, and we'll also bring in the curtain demo, like that. So I'm going to hit 4 in this case, and boom, I'm going to left click, hit Q, and we have loaded in this prefab, and it's pretty close. If you're familiar with the old like house map we used to have, this is pretty close to it. The difference now is that all of this stuff is editable, even the landscape, which you could never edit the landscapes. And regular uh, Unreal Engine maps, it's just not possible. So this is giving a pretty similar quality in pre-build, but it's completely editable, and you can completely build this yourself if you wanted to. So we'll run in really quick. The fences are new, by the way, and as is the porch and this staircase. This stuff is slowly coming together. I build it piece by piece, but with that, I'm able to design a system that all works together, which is really important when it comes to having people walk around this set and also the cameras and lights in the future. So this is a new porch piece up here, new stairs, and uh, it's all coming together to make a pretty standard looking like craftsman style US house. And we will be building houses and buildings from other parts of the world and different types of architecture, but this is honestly like the kind of house I live in. I grew up in these kind of houses. I see them everywhere. So I'm building what I understand first and then we'll expand from here. Uh, if you didn't see the video on the last update, you'll see that we're starting to get what I'm calling terrain. So you can click on these different big grass patches and you can scroll and add grass to them and they all snap together. And so if we go into the exterior section, you'll see that we have the grass ones. Those are the first ones. They're not very good. Um, I made some ones with sand on them and they have uh, like a sand looking grass. We'll add different types of foliage over time. And there's a water one which would make a pretty easy beach. I made a demo of it. I haven't made a prefab beach yet. We probably will in the future. Uh, so we'll jump down, hitting Y again. I'm going to spin around here and I'm going to load in this other set. Click. And this is our desert set. So we're using like the desert terrains here. Those are the grass ones. We're going to have all sorts of ones as you can imagine. And uh, this foliage here like this and the cactus and the rocks, I basically placed my hand, which you can definitely do, but eventually I'm going to have it so that the terrains are going to automatically place uh, grass and foliage and rocks for you and it'll be appropriate for the biome, if that makes sense, if you're into like procedural games like Minecraft or uh, No Man's Sky, etc. And this is just a quick little build that I did um, to just test some of the pipes and some of the trims and things have foundations now. So this is what's replacing maps. I know it's not quite exactly the same quality yet, but it will be and it's going to be better because again, it's modular. I'm reusing pieces. This is better for performance, better for keeping this size down of the executable, etc. So right now, um, big feedback I hear and that I would like as well is to be able to just delete everything, right? Just clear this out without having to make a new project. That's not currently possible, but I am listening to that feedback. Uh, for now, I'm going to just not save, and I'm going to reload into this empty project here. Uh, the next thing I want to show, I have to go get it again, is the curtain demo right here. And if you're interested, again, all of the new residential stuff is in here. We have uh, fences and stairs and a naked man porch column, which I didn't make a thumbnail for. And the commercial stuff has these curtains, which we're going to look at, and just all the new assets, they're just kind of being like not so well uh, organized, but they're being put in these folders here and this stuff here. And so for the next month or so, uh, I'm going to be continuing to add to this and then we're going to move on to the next phase, but this will continue to get built out over time uh, for sure. So let's load in this, um, oops, wrong keys. Uh, let's load in this curtain demo and hit one. And this is the first time where I'm actually loading in light stands where I'm going to eventually start loading in some, uh, or at least have things where we have like pre-set up cameras, pre-set up lights for like interviews and psych walls, which act as like kind of mini tutorials. But this is the first time I've put stands in here. I have to kind of rewrite the stands for this, being able to put them in the prefabs. They were not designed for that, but it'll, uh, Eventually that'll happen. So I have the new curtains here. Uh, again, they're in the inventory, but I just pre-placed them against windows. And I want to show you uh, how the lighting works for these. And if, for people that are new and haven't seen how the lighting works in general, this is a good demo. 
So I'm going to go to film industry, which is what's automatically picked up here. And I'm going to click on this 18K. So to mount lights, I know it's a little buggy in certain situations, but you're going to select the light, hover the stand, and now it says on the top, on the left over there, it says F is attached. Try to make it bright yellow. So that goes up there. And then you're going to want to tilt down. And if you want to see the haze of the light, I should probably make this more apparent. The, the UI, it continues to evolve, but I'm going to click Twilight twice. Still have to click it twice, sadly. And now you have a much better view of the lighting that's going on here. So I'm going to actually scoot over and I'm going to spot this in like that. And I'm going to raise the intensity just a bit. And then we have this light essentially pointing right through the window. So this curtain material, I've been working on this for a long time because it, it changes a lot of the way that a scene feels if there's curtains and how light interacts with them. If you go watch movies right now, like just go pick any scene that's like an interior in a house. This is a big deal. It's a big part of set design and lighting together. So getting this to feel right with real-time graphics, like not even ray tracing or anything like that yet, um, this has been a big effort and building this uh, curtain mesh in Houdini has a little bit of movement to it. Eventually we'll be able to change how much it's blowing in the wind, etc. but it has like a little bit of wind now. Uh, this is a demo for that. And pretty cool is if you look at the shadows right now, it even has the pattern of the cloth being projected through. Now there's a resolution thing happening with raster shadows, like non ray traced ones right now, but um, it does let haze through and it does look really good. And if you're lighting scenes this way with light through like a sheer curtain, like something like this, this is like one of the best and easiest visualizations you'll get of it. Is it perfectly realistic? No. But does it look like it? Can it communicate like what you're going for? I think it does a really good job of that. So uh, what I'm going to do here next is uh, select this light, hit C, which duplicates it. Then hover, hit F. Okay, that's a lot of hotkeys, but duplicating it. F. And now we have that same light, same settings coming through here. And you can see the different uh, light patterns that are happening. This one's like a full curtain. This is like two uh, one meter curtains on the side like this. And you can see how it affects the shadow pattern. In this case, it's not doing much. Oh no, it's there. That's the shadow pattern there. And this one is half of one. So check these out. They should work on any computer. Again, lighting and uh, especially shadows are actually the expensive part. Um, the thing that slows down your computer are the shadow calculations, which is why ray tracing is going to be really helpful in uh, you know a year or two when everyone has that kind of tech. These are actually a little bit nicer, um, more realistic, more resolution, etc. But right now, these are the raster graphics. This will work on Mac OS, uh, a mobile eventually, sort of, um, and PC, of course. So check these out. Um, backlight some scenes. I'm going to go make some, I think, like renders of this today myself. I'm really happy with these and want to play with them a little bit more. And that is the main update here. So uh, kind of briefly, let's talk about the direction of CineTracer. One of the first main things that changed was that in version 0 0.5, I got rid of the maps. I made a video explaining that, but uh, long story short, for performance, for the future of the game, for um, the fact that you can't ever change those maps, the user can't change them, those are all really bad things and bad designs for game development. And in the beginning, I thought it was going to scale okay, but... Um, just for game development reasons and making this modular and smaller and better performing, etc., those had to go away. Now, I'm bringing them back in, I think this is the first update where it kind of really looks like old maps here, where we're going to be putting in terrains, you're going to have foliage, you're going to have the sky controls are the same, and then you just load in at runtime. You're like importing instead of opening a map, you're importing that set into it. And for people with high-end computers, it's like, what's the big deal? But if you had a lower-end computer, PC or Mac, um, you know, mostly laptops with like integrated graphics cards, those bigger maps, when you load them in the other way, they would actually crash a computer if you went over memory. This way is less likely to crash it. And it's easier for me to tell then from error reports that I get from users what's happening. People will be like, you know, uh, on the old version, people would be like, oh, I tried to open the motel set, which looks great. And we're going to rebuild it. Uh, something pretty similar, uh, they'd be like, it just crashes my computer, hard crashes it, like black screen of death, gotta like hold power, that sort of stuff. And it's hard for me to tell like why that's happening. I mean, I kind of know it's like, you know, too many texture, too much texture memory, etc. But when we load it in this way, I'd be like, you know, it's easier to tell like, can you load in the curtain demo? If you can't, like, I don't know, you're running this on like a Game Boy or something. 
Uh, it's like, can you load the desert set? And we'll be able to build bigger and bigger ones. And then we'll be able to tell like, this computer can load this one, this computer can load that one. So this is a lot easier for me to maintain. And again, these ones you can edit and you can also build yourself if you get into the building system. Uh, long term, I want to be, I want to make it easy for people to share maps that they create because some people like to build, some people do not. Uh, and I think it would be really helpful and like a big part of the community for this to grow is that people make maps like in Minecraft and Fortnite creative, and then they share them with other people. So if someone builds like a huge football stadium that took them a week, they can just share it. It's a pretty small file, the save file. It's just um, lists of like, you know, where the assets are, etc. So that should be possible in like the long future. I'm not like committing to it being there yet. Um, if you saw some of the demo videos, I'm working on making the terrain so that you can sculpt them, maybe, or like paint rocks onto them and just make them more customizable. I'm trying to make this a very simple, easy version of the Unreal Engine editor where you can build anything. I'm trying to make like a simple, fun version where you've got like half an hour, not like, you know, a week to build an environment. Um, and uh, we're gonna continue to build out as essentially the residential set and this commercial set. These are kind of like warehouses and stores, that sort of stuff. And I'm just building out what you would normally have for video game layout, which actually works really well for a previs virtual production as well. And just continuing to build these. And I'm going to do that for like another month. And I'm going to GDC in March. And at that point, after that, I'm going to switch into working on the character system where I'm going to attempt to make it so that you can like change their clothing and their hair and like do like a cu character customizer. It's uh, it's that's one of the more difficult things to do. So I'm going to start basic, you know, so we'll have another character class. Um, these will just stay for now. These are all experiments. They're honestly the timeline of me learning how to build this. So we'll have another category, which is like the, the customizable characters. And I'll try to combine uh, a lot of the functionality together and make them less laggy because uh, for sure, when you load these, these are really laggy on the system. Unless, they're like, unless you have like a super fast computer. Uh, after that, I'll be moving back into both camera and lighting. These need to get updated together. These are from like the alpha. These are very old. Uh, lights got updated for ray tracing. Cameras have not been updated since forever. And I have a lot of new ideas, a lot of feedback, curve track, keyframes, uh, all the things I'm listening to the feedback. So um, that's kind of the future, the roadmap of it. A little bit more environments into actors, into cameras and lighting. And then this is all like very experimental still. I'm, I'm trying to get this to work on the iPad Pro. Don't expect to have any lights, but you'll have like a kind of basic version. And then you can open, hopefully, the iPad files on the PC as well. So they're hopefully like interchangeable. That's the goal. And uh, last up, as far as like community, it's just me. I don't even have anybody. I mean, I have some people kind of helping, but like uh, primarily it's me. So if like, if you're emailing me or, you know, hitting me up on like, you know, the 50 different channels there are, I definitely don't have time to respond to all of them. I do my best, but I, I, I just don't have time. I can either make the game or, or respond full time. But what I'm going to go back to doing is leaving Discord open. So I'll leave a link to the Discord uh, at least in the YouTube video, you can find it if you look hard enough. And in general, I'm uh, going to just kind of leave that up. There's another uh, Discord channel that I'm in full time and I need to be there. So I thought I might as well be in the cinematography database one for Cinetracer and you know whatever. Uh, I'll be in Discord a lot more. So this is the version 0.54 update. That's the roadmap. And I'll see you again in like another month. I've been updating like, uh, or at least pushing updates every month. I update every day, but we push the big updates every month. So see you guys on the next video.